What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel to a brand new video. The first ever electric car, I'm gonna call it an impromptu review because I only have it for one day. I, this is not clickbait, I did actually buy or order a new take on Porsche River Oaks huge shout out was nice enough to lend me their demo which is a brand new 2022 take on it's the base model car and when I say brand new I mean 205 miles on the clock this is a pretty base car so if I love this then you already know I'm gonna love uh, the car that I'm ordering so far I am split and if I told you I didn't have a little bit of range anxiety uh, I would be lying uh, they couldn't find the at-home charger when I borrowed the car. So unfortunately for me, I have about 135 miles to play with and I am headed out to these country roads where there is definitely not gonna be a charger. And a little piece of me is just a little terrified like what happens if I run out of battery out here. Since this is the base 2022 take on, we are looking at right around 421 horsepower, a measly, and I say measly because an electric car is usually a lot higher, I believe it's like 250 pound foot of torque. A car with only 250 pound foot, it feels a lot stronger. And that's just that instant torque you get from the electric motors. What do I like about the car so far? Well, I love that it is a car. I've driven quite a few electric cars, pretty much all of the Teslas and the Audi e-tron. And all of those cars kind of have a, they don't feel like cars. They feel like phones or laptops. They feel like the latest and greatest technology but you don't get the sense you're driving a car. This kind of feels like I'm driving a 911, not the GT3, obviously. I don't wanna knock Tesla, but they kind of make shit cars. They make very good electric vehicles, but when it comes to being a car, eh. The fit and finish is usually pretty bad. I have friends that own them. My girlfriend owns a Model S, and I know they've gotten better over the years, but I've just heard like horror stories of receiving a brand new $100,000 car with two inch panel gaps and leather that's already scratched up and bolts missing. When you're buying a $100,000 car, I think people kind of expect a little bit more. They expect a driving experience that this actually kind of has, and the Tesla does not. And I know there's some Tesla fanboys out there that are gonna freak out about that. Now we are missing quite a few things as well though. Even if we did spec this car out with Porsche's version of autopilot, it is nowhere near Tesla's version. We don't get a video game console in our center dash. We don't get a giant screen. We don't get a yoke, which is probably a pro for me because I don't think I would enjoy not having something to grab onto here. We get 200 miles of range standard compared to 350 miles of range standard. And the biggest downfall that I think is gonna probably kill this car if they don't do something about it is the lack of a Porsche charging network. Tesla's done a very good job rolling out these superchargers all over the place. You really don't have to worry about your range anxiety because there's always a place to stop and charge. Even out here in the country, there was a Tesla supercharger back there. I cannot use that with this car. I have to use the janky ones at like Whole Foods that don't really do a good job charging and don't really work half the time. If I was gonna drive across the country, I'm not taking the take on. I don't think I would make it. I understand that Porsche's not an electric car company. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually a lot of fun to drive, uh, but I think as these bigger companies roll out these like electric charging stations to replace gas stations, this won't be an issue. But right now as it stands, this isn't the easiest car to take on a road trip. The fact that I can throw this thing into turns, I'm, I'm actually pushing, I had my GT3 on this road a couple of days ago and this feels right there. And this is a base, base. I'm down on power. I don't have all wheel drive. I don't have rear wheel steering. This is something I would not do in the Tesla. I, I've never gotten in a Tesla, even the P100D, I'm yet to drive the Plaid, but I've never gotten into a Tesla and thought, I'm gonna go throw it into some backcountry roads and have some fun with it. This is wonderful. Uh, this gives me a new outlook on electric cars. Going into this, I hated electric cars. Now I'm thinking this might not be that bad. Maybe, maybe the future isn't so shitty. This crammed into a 911 or a, even better, a Cayman? Holy shit. I mean, I, I don't know how hard I can push this thing, but I don't feel like I'm approaching the limit at all. I'm taking, the speed limit on this turn is 42, I'm at 77. Uh, and I'm just gonna hold it at 77, cut the lane. Not a problem at all. The, uh, the nowhere to charge it issue might not really matter because when it is charged, this thing is phenomenal. V8 
visually and the experience of driving it and the interior quality is where this separates itself from the Tesla. This is a Porsche through and through. It feels like I'm driving a 911. And even this being the base car, everything is wrapped with like a premium vinyl and leather and race tacks. Very little plastic and where there is plastic, it's, it's very nice plastic. It's not cheap stuff. I can push on any part of this car and it does not creak. And from experience, Porsches don't start creaking. Like I can push on any part of this car three years from now with 80,000 miles and it will still react the same way. I will say there's a lot of small screens in here and I wish there were less screens and just one larger one. I have a pretty awesome digital gauge cluster in front of me uh, that I can customize There's a couple different versions of it I can put up there. I can have a full map and all that. My favorite being the power meter, which shows me you know, as I'm regeneratively braking and then as I'm pushing, it kind of tells me my, my output and input of power. But then the actual infotainment screen is kind of narrow. It's kind of jammed between the top and bottom. You probably have like, if I had to guess, a five inch vertical screen. And then we have another very large screen right under it, but it pretty much just contributes to the top screen. You really can't do much with it besides control the top screen. And if you get the technology package, you get one more screen in front of the passenger that kind of just shows auxiliary data. It's really cool in the Ferrari. I don't know if it's really cool in the Taycan. Also, again, range anxiety. I really gotta watch this range because I'm not gonna be able to get home if I keep pushing it. My only other gripe on the interior is that there's no knobs. And I get that Porsche wanted to go futuristic and all screens, and, and I appreciate that but I want to be able to turn the AC up and down without having to use a screen. I want to be able to turn the volume up and down without using the screen. Some things just deserve to have physical buttons and nothing got physical buttons in this car. So far that I can't even adjust where the AC is blowing without using the screen. I know the Dune Teslas did the same. That drives me crazy. Like it's blowing in my face and I just want to angle it down. It's not a quick, now it's, you know, find it in the screen, drag it, wait for it to adjust, see where it hits. That's probably my biggest pet peeve with this car. It's just like, give me some buttons. Like I get what you were going for, but just give me some buttons. Now, as much as I can say that I thoroughly do love this car, it's just the stress level that comes with it that I don't really like. There is something so nice about being able to just pull into a gas station and swipe your credit card and within 10 minutes, you're good. It might cost $200 to fill the Raptor up, but the peace of mind knowing that no matter where I am with that truck, I can always just refill it. I don't even look at the range. Until I get down to about 10 miles, it doesn't even cross my mind that I might need to think about getting gas or whatever. In this, I am constantly glancing down to see, oh, I, you know, I, I hit a little hard in that turn. How much did my range drop? I have the AC on because it's 102 degrees outside right now. Where's my range at? Trying to always make sure, like, do I have enough to get home? And for me right now, like, do I have enough to make it through this next 24 hours? And to be honest with you guys, I don't know if I do. I may have to find somewhere to try to charge this thing. So we are pulling into Whole Foods. I don't even know if this charger works with this car, but it's the only one on the map that I can use uh, within 20 miles. So I don't have an option. Where do I, where do I swipe? It looks like I have to download an app. Also, what does this mean? What is, what is Chadmo? Shamo. See, and this is the issue, right? I literally build software for a living. And this is the most confusing thing in the world. Why can I not just swipe my credit card and then do some electricity? Now I have to make an account. I've already been here for 10 minutes just trying to figure out what's going on and how to actually do this. I have to put a billing address. Why not just use Apple Pay? Now the problem is I have one bar. So everything I do takes like three minutes to go through. Now I have to verify my email or I can't put a card in. That makes total sense. Now I have to pick what type of charger I want, which I don't know. I, do I want a C1931 or a Indigo? Fuck me, right? I'm just gonna guess. And, and this is, I think, the biggest problem right now. If I had a Tesla, this wouldn't be an issue. But since I'm in the Porsche and I'm not near a dealership, I have to deal with this thing. And this thing sucks. I will say this is frustrating enough that if it wasn't for the video, I would just go home and I would just give them the car back with zero miles. But I do wanna see what this experience is like. Please make sure your connector is plugged in. It's not plugged in. You didn't tell me to plug it in. That is really cool. I'll give them that. That is not, hold up. No. And now that we flipped the car around, another fun fact about the Taycan, I initially thought there were chargers on either side. And I was like, oh, that's pretty nifty because now no matter where I park, I'm good. No, turns out uh, they are different. This is the one you have to use for these kind of chargers and the at-home charger. And the other side is for Porsche superchargers at the dealership. And I think I hit that button to start maybe. 103 seconds to charge, charge. That may have just ruined this whole thing for me. And I was really enjoying this car. I really, I was really enjoying it. Basically that charger after talking to support on the phone 
and sitting outside for 20 minutes, I'm dripping sweat now, uh, I was informed that that charger doesn't actually work. Luckily for me, I have enough to get me home and then take this car back to the dealership. But if I didn't, that was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. And that right there might be enough to make me say the Tesla is a better option. Realistically speaking, when my car comes in, I will have an at-home 220 uh, charger set up in the garage and I will probably charge it at night where it will, I think, do a full charge in like six hours, five hours. So my car will be at full charge every single morning and that's why I'll probably still go this route. But if you're somebody that's not gonna be able to charge at home or in an apartment or somewhere you live that you can't charge it and you have to use other chargers, that sucks. with exactly 15 miles of range. So we got lucky outside of the whole like charging fiasco. This thing doesn't suck at all. And this is the base, I keep saying it's a base Taycan because this is a $106,000 base Taycan, underpowered, no rear wheel steering, doesn't have like all the, the fancy stuff inside and it's still a hell of a car. So final verdict, epicness. Now the only thing left for me to do is probably review a Tesla Plaid. Uh, so I think that might be the next video because it's the only other thing I'm thinking about. Like do I get the GTS? Do I get the plaid? And the only other question is, do I get red or do I get black? Comment down below. Thanks for watching the video. Smash the subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.